Tom Asliak, and what you just saw was the most important move of parkour. But what is parkour? Well, it's often described as the art of motion, or moving from point A to point B as quickly and efficiently as possible. But going through the philosophy and discipline of parkour is a task too great for me at the moment. Instead, this video is focused on the physics of parkour. So how did my personal ninja jump 7 feet through the air without even slightly injuring himself? The key is the PK roll. A healthy human leg can absorb up to 200 joules of energy without breaking, assuming that a person has two legs and lands exactly right so the impact is spread evenly across those two legs. We can double the initial number, resulting with 400 joules of energy that can be exerted on your legs without them breaking. By using the equation potential energy equals mass of the body times height of the fall times acceleration due to gravity, we can calculate the amount of energy that would be exerted on a body during impact since the potential energy at the top equals the kinetic energy at the bottom. Let's begin by plugging in real numbers for the variables. With the height of the porch being 2 meters, acceleration due to gravity 9.8 meters per second squared, and my friend Brendan's weight 60 kilograms, the potential energy equals 1176 joules. That means that when Brendan lands on the ground, 1176 joules of energy are exerted on his body. But as I stated before, Brendan's legs should only be able to take 400 joules of impact. So how is it that he's not lying on the ground screaming in agony as we speak? The answer to that is the parkour roll. Let's analyze the past two jumps. If I were to simply drop off the porch, straight down, all the impact of the drop would compress upon my legs with one quick motion that would destroy them. So what the PK roll does is it extends the time of impact as much as possible, so the energy is spread through a much longer time period as well as surface area, which decreases the energy compressed on my body per given time. The parkour roll also spreads the impact across the whole body, rather than just the legs, which saves the knees from serious injury. The unique roll is used after jumps to transfer the vertical falling movement into a horizontal one, that as a result decreases pressure on the joints and facilitates the work of the muscles. It's also important to note that the time of impact is affected by the type of material that you land on. If you land on grass rather than concrete, a softer landing will obviously occur because the ground gives in and squishes as you land, which adds additional time to the time of impact. move is called a kip-up, and it's the quickest and most efficient way to get back up on your feet. Let's analyze the move and apply some physics. According to Newton's first law of motion, an object at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by another force. In this case, two forces must occur to launch the body to the upright standing position. The first of the two is the forward kicking of the feet, which accelerates the body forward. By applying Newton's second law of motion, we know that if you kick twice as hard, you'll move twice as far. By applying Newton's third law, we know that by pushing down on the ground, the ground pushes back on you with an equal force, which propels the body upwards. With the combination of the vertical and horizontal components, the body simply shoots up diagonally and results in the landing position just by adding the curved posture mid-air. Let's continue. As one of the goals of parkour is to be efficient and save time, this next move called the con is used to overcome obstacles while keeping as much momentum as possible so you don't slow down and waste time. A 
As you might have noticed, the move includes the use of your hands. And the reason for that is that your hands give you extra power and control over your movements and allow you to make elastic and changes to speed and direction that aren't possible in midair. Also, vaulting tends to keep your center of mass lower than simply jumping, which means that you spend less energy fighting gravity and absorb less impact when returning to the ground. one way in parkour. Hey, we are the next location to learn the most commonly used move in parkour, the wall jump. The idea of the wall jump is pretty simple. Its objective is to reach the top of the wall and then get on top of it. But the technique is not as easy as it seems. If you push down the wall, you will go down. If you push against the wall, you will go flying in the opposite direction. For a successful wall jump to occur, your foot must hit the wall with a 45 degrees angle while pushing both into it as well as downwards. During a wall jump, your body overpowers the force of gravity for a few seconds by using the angle of your foot to convert horizontal force into a vertical one. This aspect is actually exactly the opposite from the parkour roll. There are many ways to climb a wall, but the wall jump is the most effective. Even though the average person can't actually do one, with a little bit of practice anyone can scale a wall twice their height. This move is called the wall climb. And even though it's not very popular in parkour, because it's not usually found in the urban environment, it is just as equally useful when indeed found. The main reason this move works is friction. If the two walls were covered with slime, you wouldn't be able to reach much height. So the action you must take to keep yourself up is a push against both walls with your feet that create enough force to overpower gravity's pull on your body. As a final note, one of the great things about parkour is that you're born ready. It's a discipline that involves training to allow yourself to overcome any obstacle simply by using your body. Whether it's a physical obstacle or a mental one makes no difference. It's just a way of navigating through life in the best way possible, learning to overcome and adapt to any situation. And that's the beauty of our boy.